the Netherlands, a damp smear of a country barely rising from the North Sea. Foreigners called it the buttock of the world. But this unpromising land would become one of the 17th century's greatest successes. At the end of the century, an Amsterdam merchant held a banquet. His menu celebrated the three stages of the Dutch Golden Age. Herring and cheese for its simple beginnings. Roast meats when there was enough for everyone. French wines and delicacies when it all became too decadent. The Dutch East India Company sailed to distant shores bringing back the world's spices. Nutmeg, cloves, cinnamon. The key to Dutch success was an audacious new trade route, non-stop from Europe, wide of the southern tip of Africa, across the Indian Ocean using fast southerly winds, through a belt of perilous seas and on to the Spice Islands. The Dutch seized the existing trading posts, a high-cost, high-risk bid for the wealth of the world. For centuries, trade had enriched the East at Western expense. Now the Orient's highest value goods benefited shareholders in Amsterdam. The second stage of plenty, enough for everyone, had begun. New wealth paid for a new enthusiasm, art for the middle classes. Commercial opportunities, combined with its reputation for religious and political tolerance, attracted men and women from all over Europe to the Netherlands. French philosopher René Descartes settled there and wrote to a friend in Paris. S'il y a du plaisir à voir croître les fruits de nos vergers, if it gives us pleasure to see fruit grow in our orchard, do we not get just as much pleasure to see ships arriving laden with the wealth of the Indies? In what other country are all the luxuries of life as easy to find as here? A 1662 guidebook to Amsterdam boasted, God has taken the riches from other cities and spilled them into our laps. Outwardly they may be modest, but you will find no private building so sumptuously magnificent as a great many of the merchants and other gentlemen's houses are in Amsterdam. Wealth made the Dutch uneasy, but their main emotion was pride. Amsterdam marked its commercial success with a new town hall built by the citizens for the citizens. For the Dutch, Atlas held the universe and Amsterdam was at its center. The Dutch poet, Fondel, called it the eighth wonder of the world. Hoogtijd van het stadhuis en burgerheerschappijen met de jaarmarkt die met haar... Our splendid town hall praises its citizens' power. 
a festive fair to which all our neighbors are invited. It is a glorious banquet with such promise of joy and abundance of treasures as only our artists can create. The Dutch commissioned artists to furnish their homes. Rich merchants wanted portraits of themselves and those precious to them. Humbler citizens also commissioned paintings. These showed their world, not the grand world of the wealthy, but the stuff of everyday life. Simple family life was the Dutch ideal. For them, the perfect woman was shapely of limb and of a fleshy stock, of pleasing aspect and clean of teeth, born in the realm of our own Netherlands. But other paintings criticized declining morals through cryptic symbols. A conical glass was a firm breast. An open mussel or oyster was an available woman. Some muscles are closed, but mine is always open. The last stage of the golden age was at hand. Desire and luxury led to decadence. Sluit voor begeert u graag gezicht. Zij loert, zij loert om in te varen. Desire is ever near. Sluit de ogen. So close your eyes, those windows of light. Uw hart bewaren. Lest it invade you. Want, want zo begeert u. Want zo. Preserve your heart, and do not let yourself be conquered. Zij zal. For desire will bring ruin and burning sin evermore. The Dutch were frightened that God would punish their excess by making their wealth disappear. Amsterdam's richest spent summer in their country houses. Here they collected the Netherlands' most expensive luxury. Paintings cost a few guilders, but in the 1630s the tulip, a product of the exotic East, cost a fortune. People traded land, houses, gold and silver for a single tulip bulb. It couldn't last. The costs of empire proved too great for a republic corrupted by wealth. Where the gold begins. Where the gold begins. Where the gold begins. Where gold begins. Is deugd maar wind. Virtue is but wind.